two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I can flip a dollar to a million. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. Three, two, one. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on. It's a new day, days been new. Been a decade since I made it out of rent too. We some owners, baby, we don't got no rent due. My trick, but my wife, you like the trick too. Merry Christmas, hey Saint Nick. What we want, get, we on wait list. How we got here doesn't make sense. Have patience, that'll make sense. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I can flip a dial to a million. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. Three, two, one. I don't like to brag, but I'm really young Picking up the slack Drawing in this prime way, I'm getting to the rack I do what I want, when I want, what I want, no cap Putting all work, now I'm getting to the back 25-8, I got money on my mind Live life great, but I'm always on the grind Navy blue tank, I don't wear for the time Real hustler, baby, throw my rollie in the sky Get ready for blast off Ball pointing cushy, so you know it's berserk Trevor on the mix, so you know we gon' work. I might leave him where and find that beach and go surf. I might ride the way till I'm out of this surf. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I can flip a dog to a million. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. Three, two, one. I follow my written down structure here things are gonna go smoothly there's no guarantees today I want to talk to you about another phenomenal find that I I came across and I, um, I was chomping at the bit to share it with you for weeks and weeks and I've been teasing it uh, Meyer Audio's second one I've got from them the Slaevo SLT6 Slaevo SLT for tuning switches six. This is a six balanced armature IM, and you can see with this stabilized wood with this funky black and silver inserts that uh, it certainly looks like another one that's been very, very popular on the market. Dunu SA6 Mark II. Do I think they actually went after these guys and made a better I am? Yeah, I do. I also have here the Penon Turbo. I'm also going to do a spider graph. I'm going to do a comparison between the three. Um, and I'm going to give you lots of information to... Uh, counteract my all my shilling and uh, hype of this I am this is one that's going to generate its own um, universe absolutely for sure um, now I loved the Pula and that was kind of like a hidden gem and I'm not sure where all of these are getting made the Juz ears the um, Slaevo, the Dunu, and um, 
that Pula could all be manufactured in the same factory. They sure do look like they have very similar shells with very similar writing. And and if we compare this Le Evo SLT6 to the Dunu, um, man oh man, uh, good luck in seeing a difference between the two in the shells, um, quite honestly. So anyway, let's jump into this a little bit. Um, now, uh, my last video was a 64 audio volure. Now, it's always a bad idea to do a review or do listen to anything after Magnificence. Um, why? Because everything else sounds like ass. And uh, I made this note to my fellow Canucks audioholics that it wasn't the case. Uh, in fact, I've been listening to this set for weeks and weeks, and I have just been super excited about it, and uh, they're probably super excited about me talking about this as well. Um, because I think it has one of the best BA bass I've ever heard. And the Velour definitely has the best bass of any I am I've ever heard. And I love this I am. I will tell you straight up. Okay. Um, it didn't fall that short of my huge expectations after listening to the 64 audio velour if that makes sense it wasn't i didn't stick these things in after putting those other ones in and having to give them back um and it wasn't like oh it was like oh man these things have um uh, they they can stand on their own um, and they're wonderful. And in some cases, you might want to pick this thing up over something else just because of the way it sounds um, in its sound signature. So, now, Meyer Audio. Um, one thing I will say about them is when I looked on the website and I looked uh, at their marketing speak and their graphs, I got to tell you something, though, that... That is rare. Not too many times where the marketing speak uh, actually translates to non-bullshit. Um, when they describe the uh, SR41, SL41, the one plus four, I just did, as a kind of monitor-like tuning, and I and then listening to it, it's like, yeah, you you guys not only tuned it that way you actually understand you tuned it that way and can describe it that way and it's the same thing with this set and the, and the factory graphs are very very close to mine so i knowing from the first one i knew what i was going to get from the second and water i was certainly hopeful and uh they came across in everything um standout wise so uh, comes in this little unassuming box, which is nice. Uh, definitely a step up from the Pula stuff. Um, and the same exact case without a Pula written on here. Inside you get, yes, you get a SPC modular right angle connector. Oh, let's pull up the Dunu again right kind of suspiciously interesting um and uh, both of those cables suck by the way uh, i'm not a big fan of the uh, factory one from the Slaevo as well where uh the sl41 one plus four comes with that super wicked uh jazir limpid cable this has a thinner tangly one uh, that's modular great touch Thank you for that, though. You definitely have tried. But that cable sucks. Um, and I put mine on a different one. Now, I'm going to talk about one more at the end as well. And this has to come into play because 
uh, last night. Um, my impressions were done. My comparisons were done. Like I said, I've had this thing for weeks and weeks and have been listening to it a lot. And I had my pen on turbo here as well. And um, I was waiting for uh, Parkster's. Thank you for the share, by the way. Um, his do new SA6 Mark II that he bought. So, and that came in. And so then I re listened to all my tracks again and all my impressions and wrote down and got my thoughts. And then I was done. And then so last night it was like I was done. I wrote all my stuff out, uh, all my notes. I'm good to go. Let's spend some time for me. Let's just put take the reviewer hat off. And what do I want to listen to? So I open up my cases and I have my favorites case. There's a tier structure of my favorites case. And um, I pull out the Zen's Maggard Up. It is still my all-time absolute uh, guilty pleasure favorite I am. And it was simply wonderful to just relax, sit back and chill. And as I'm doing it, my stupid brain goes, hot damn, you know, that last one you just had in your ear sounds a whole lot like this thing. And then of course I can't turn off my brain. And uh, then I then I made the mistake of pulling up a freaking graph. And I know graphs don't, tell you everything but they do tell you tonality wise in a pretty good snapshot and lo and behold what do i find that my absolute favorite i am and the one i'm talking about today happens to align extremely closely and then i had to take it further and then i had to do the ab on that one too so i'm going to share you my thoughts on the hybrid tribrid how does that compare to this 6ba i am all right so now that that opening part is over let's talk a little bit about uh this iem and uh give you an idea so slt6 uh 450 us you can even find it on hi-fi go has picked them up now as well um two tuning switches for signatures Two Sonyan uh, open architecture subs, two customized Sonyan mids, two customized Sonyan knolls for the treble. It has a hundred and sense, a hundred and thirteen to hundred and sixteen dB sensitivity, so very very sensitive. And this is the interesting one an impedance of 50 to 65 ohms, which is considered quite high in the IAM world. And when I read that, I was I, I didn't really know what to expect. I just, um, is it going to make a difference? And, well, we'll see. So, the shells are handcrafted. They are unique every single one of them right my one is different than my left and my different from my right um in a stabilized wood the evo is underneath the writing that says meyer 04 slt6 right and left the tuning switches are being shown badly to you right now on the camera there you go and there is a vent close to the two pin. Okay. Now, what does the SA6 look like? Whoa, there's a shell is exactly the same shell with a bigger top plate as on the Dunu SA6. This one is slightly smaller, but the shell shape is bang on. Same exact vent. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, on the SA6 Mark II. What else did I love about this IAM that uh, made it stand out for me? Well, 
couple things I thought was really good. So where the Juno SA6 has no, it's all um, resin, turbo, all resin, stainless steel nozzle. Why do they do that? Well, it's it holds a grip on your um, ear tips like nobody's business. Now, I also will mention that the that is 6.24 millimeters. It is fairly, it's not fairly large, it is large. So you might need to require a smaller ear tip in there. What I put on mine, uh, interestingly enough, is the foam red tips that came with the package. And I did so for one good reason. Um, and that had to do with uh, ear pressure, driver flex, and not driver flex, but ear pressure. Now, with some IEM sets, especially in BA sets, I find that I get a little bit of pressure buildup. And it does some wonky stuff for my inner ear. It actually does like a wave cancellation. So it, it cancels out the low frequencies, but it enhances the high frequencies. And it makes it quite unple uh, unpleasant to listen to for anything more than a minute or two. Now, I found with foam tips um, that it alleviates all of that extra buildup and pressure. I get zero with this um, and it also acoustically happened to work out really well that these sounded really quite well really quite nice um, with this I am um, and it didn't and I used from using the silicone uh, tips I was using some um, De Venice velvet tips that and I get pressure buildup after about five minutes uh, I didn't uh, found I lost anything with the foam tips. Um, so there you go on that. Now, it comes with that uh, little blue fake pleather and that cable um, and those tuning switches. There's, so there's two tuning switches uh, and there's four um they call them four different things so and i labeled them in my squig link and i'll pull up that graph later here uh or i'll do it now um the four are standard which is down down high sensitivity um increases efficiency they say atmospheric which is up down which gives us the most amount of bass and beautiful vocals so the tuning switches are not a joke. They do make a difference on paper, on graph paper. It's very subtle, but in ear, it's actually quite more noticeable, actually, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Yan Yan uh, Canon was also like that as well that I found. So, so for sound wise, this bad boy uses Sonyan's open aperture woofer, BA woofers. Um, there's a, a set of balanced armatures um, with that series uh, with a chamber airflow valve. Um, so to help maximize bass and uh, prevent some of that pressure buildup I was talking about. The two Sonyan custom mid-range balanced armatures and two custom Knowles high frequency BAs. Now, if you've ever watched any of my videos for me, that is the secret special sauce that I seem to have found that I absolutely love uh, tonality-wise in I am Sonyan Mids, Knowles Highs. I think uh, because what I find, and if this video doesn't prove my theory about uh, that for me, nothing does. So I find Sonyan very lush, very musical in the mids for the BAs, better than Knowles. I find Knowles have more of an edge, more of a sharpness to them. And it's the same thing in the high frequencies. I find the Knowles a bit soft, um, and I find the Knowles um, 
a little bit sharper and crisper, and it makes it for a better treble. And interestingly enough, if we go to the other two comparisons that are going to do for the six BAs, the Meyer Audio uses the, they all use the Sonian woofers. The Penon has less information, but they did say it uses Sonian woofers. I don't know if it's the open architecture ones. I'm not sure. Uh, so the, all three will assume that they're using the same, could be different series though, I don't know. So they're using all Sonian. Uh, where the Meyer Audio, the uh, Slaevo, is using customized Sonian mids. The Penon Turbo is using Knowles mids. The Dunu SA6 Mark II is also using Knowles mids. The highs are customized Knowles for the treble for the SLT6. For the Penon Turbo, they're Sonian highs. And for the Dunu, again, they're using Knowles. So it, it went from Sonian, Sonian Knowles in the SLT6 to Sonian Knowles Sonian for the Panon and Sonian Knowles Knowles for the Duno. And how does that translate uh, to sound? And as we do some track impressions, um, I will share what those three sounded like um, after listening to ABC, ABC every single track and then writing down. So Back to the configuration just for a little bit. A three way uh, crossover, um, three sound tubes to channel sound into the massive 6.2 inch nozzle. Yeah, it was big. Stabilized wood, black sparkle inserts are really pretty. I mean, between the two, the Dunu SA6 Mark II and this one, I, th I think this is by far the nicer looking shell. And again, that's subjective, um, but I really was quite thrilled when I saw it. So uh, the black sparkly inserts are very classy. Um, they really look good. Flush two pin again is beautiful. Uh, well, well finished shells. Switches for a second. Now I'm not gonna spend massive amounts of time in there, but you know that of course, uh, tuning switches. Between these three IMs, there's seven freaking tuning switches, seven right four in the pen on you're the most guilty this one is two i can deal with that and uh the base switch in the i screwed that up four pen on two in the meyer audio and one in the dunu okay uh oops sorry ups you go over here baby i'll take care of you later um now I'm just going to briefly do an overview of the four switches. Now, two of them were my favorite, and the other two were not so much. Um, the atmospheric, so it gives you the most amount of bass. I'm going to pull up the graph now. And you can see that it has a slightly bit more bottom end sub bass than the standard tuning. And on paper, that certainly doesn't look like it's going to do anything. Actually, it really does. Uh, the atmospheric uh, up-down switch is the most bass boosted. Um, and what I find with that, um, and, and the treble boosted, um, it, the, it had amazing amazing textured BA bass. Um, some of the best BA, I will say it is the best BA bass I have heard, and that trumps the U12T. Um, and there's that super fine line between BA bass and dynamic driver like uh, Decay. And this, we'll go more into that. The bass is standout, absolutely. And this is me coming off the the 64 audio velour the absolute best bass i've ever heard true isobaric um the standard uh switch down down i loved that tuning it has slightly less thicker note weight at the bottom and it uh, and it and the whole tuning quite honestly the mids 
um, and makes the tonality overall a little bit, I mean, it makes it bang on neutral, actually. Um, and uh, where the switch up actually makes it a bit warm in the mids, in the lower mids. So while you slightly get a little bit more bass with the atmospheric switch on, uh, it does affect the tonality and the vocals and instruments into the mids slightly thicker, warmer. And uh, so sometimes I like that, but for the majority of the reason, uh, listening, I preferred it uh, with the switch down to just knock it down just a teeny little bit. There was that trade-off of maximum bass to um, better uh, correctness. So, and the Dunu, after listening to the SA6 Mark II, I thought I would like it more with the bass switch on, but uh, that actually isn't the case. So I was originally going to do this with uh, all the bass, and I kind of did, where all the, the frequency response curves were very similar, right? So the switch is positioned in a certain way. So the turbo, uh, I did not turn the turbo button on. It just it muddies and thickens everything up. Um, where I did turn it to, you know, their first base level uh, without the turbo. And I like that setting the most uh, with that set. And I guess uh, overall, uh, just finishing up with the tuning switches, uh, well, great on some tracks with the uh up up or the uh atmospheric switch with the maximum bass I, I prefer the more tonally correct playback on this set because i find it has an amazingly great balance of musicality actually and uh technical details and um i think that's really good um uh, it has an amazing textured bass it really does uh, and a very resolving top end with enough sparkles and twinkles without sand sounding overly bearing at all or sibilant at all, ever. Um, it's very well controlled, uh, very balanced in the mix overall. So if I were to get into this next section, um, track impressions for the three IMs, and I'll also do a spider graph on this one. Um, I'll take the time to do that. It's worth it. Um, so you know, um, and it's not me just pumping hype into this set. So this is how I heard it, okay? Um, now, I went to a variety of different genres, and I think uh, the best IEMs aren't... I think the best IEMs are, well, all-rounders. They're not, you know, IEM or genre-specific... Yeah. I think I'm struggling with saying that the best IMs are not genre specific. They actually will play everything well or play everything to the intended recording well. So Vivaldi's Double Cello Concerto by Tina Gao. How did the T6 play? Well, the strings are lovely. They are very lovely. They are textured. They have great stereo separation. Micro and macro details coming out of the everywhere. Um, the, and the, the dynamics were very, very nice. Listening to soft passages, then as the music ramps up and, and builds excitement into the thing, um, it got this playback down to a T. Nice layering between the instruments. Nice placement to where you could hear different stringed instruments inside of the stage. Uh, it was extremely well done. Now, throwing the pen on turbo with 0100 settings in. So slightly bass boosted. Uh, it does sound definitely darker. Uh, the mid sound recessed. It's missing the clarity that I just listened to and the overall resolution, the details, uh, the T6 just had a, it did a much, much better job 
Um, the pen on is a re more relaxed listen in comparison, um, and it's not nearly as exciting or correct as the T6. Um, I found the micro details with the pen on missing in this case with the sharpness of the violins. So uh, I was on this, I love this IM, and the thing is, is I didn't really have a comparison. And it's kind of interesting now, having three sets, 6BA, um, what was this doing right and what was this doing wrong in comparison to the other sets, right? So my initial impressions of all of these are correct. It's just my my world has expanded. My education has grown. And now I know more and I'm better for it as I'm sharing that with you. How did the Dunu SA6 Mark II do it? Well, um, it was not a great accurate replay, actually. Uh, missing the tonality, it's missing the excitement in the upper registers, even uh, with the switch off to lower the bass to bring up the mids and highs. Um, it, it It's a really nice, smooth, chill set. One thing I'll say with the Dunu SA6 Mark II for me is I don't, I'm not sure why there's so much hype about it. Um, to tell you the truth, it doesn't do anything special. And it doesn't, uh, it just, it's pretty laid back across the board. Um, and it really just isn't a standout IM for the being the most expensive as well at $579. Um, I think if that one would be more, like, you're not going to listen to it for classical. You're certainly not going to listen to it for strings. Um, and at almost $600, are you going to buy a, a relaxed set that you can get with a RT R2 single DB for 50 bucks? That does the same job. I know there's going to be screamers now that are going to be haters on that, but honestly, that's the way I heard it. Uh, don't spend $500. $80, spend $40 if you want that tuning on a single dynamic and you'll get the same result. So, um, All Blues by Miles Davis, the T6. Uh, now, it, get interesting. Symbol strikes are nicely detailed. Trumpet sounds spot on. Uh, texture and the nuances, the excellent layering, the depth, um, and really nice stage presentation as well. Uh, it you could pick out that you're in a really small jazz club and you're uh, or you're in a cafe like I've been to some concerts like that and uh, you're three tables back that's where your placement is it's very resolving uh, compared to the other two you can also hear the recording quality now that is a, a big statement right there so uh, I was listening to it. On to this new player that I bought, this Astral and Kern uh, Con Max. This is a very resolving, very, very nice sounding player. I thought it was sterile sounding. It isn't, but it is incredibly musical and revealing at the same time. Love this player. Um, with that player, and, and if I had a warmer source, again, a lot of these things I probably wouldn't have been able to pick up. And when I'm talking about the recording quality, um, you can clearly tell. The SA6 Mark II washes over everything. There's just not enough details in that set to actually uh, bring that out. You can't get that. It just, it yes, an incredibly forgiving for bad recordings, but do you do you necessarily want that, or do you want more accuracy? Okay, the turbo uh, sounds softer again, uh, but now the mids I found uh, a bit congested. Uh, the cymbal strikes are kind of missing the energy there again. They're not there um, in the mix. And that, and that lacks excitement. The trumpet is missing the softness on some notes uh, and the bite on others. So the tonality of the trumpet is not correct. 
Uh, is it more forgiving on bad recordings? It is over the T6. How did the SA6 do? Well, drums sound separated. They sound distant. Uh, unrefined cymbal crashes were very, very soft. Uh, again, giving me uh, chill-out vibes. It really did. And uh, organicness uh, over tonal accuracy. That's, I think, what this set is going for. Um, there's just no sense of an older recording um, in this playback. Uh, it just smooths everything out. It's, it is a very forgiving uh, I am. So, um, Labyrinth, uh, last time, the T6. This is, you know, I absolutely love. Did I mention I love the bass of this set? Uh, snappy, fit, uh, yet full bass. Um, there is, surprisingly, what I love, uh, sub bass and mid bass attack um, that this set can play back. And that is my favorite kind of bass. Uh, great top end, lots of energy. Sparkles for the fun factor are definitely there. Uh, the turbo, this one had uh, bigger bass hits in the sub area, uh, but softer uh, attack and slower response. Um, the top end is also kind of missing the fun factor. It was a, a pretty fun on EDM where I can't say the same about the Dunu SA6 Mark II. It, uh, it didn't do EDM very well at all. Uh, it just didn't have the excitement. It didn't have the snap and the attack um, that just makes EDM electronic music, you know, from yellow to crystal method to uh, a variety that I listen to as well. So uh, now let's get into some female vocals. Uh, Salt Skin by Ellie Golding. Uh, T6, punchy, snappy bass, snappy mid bass, excellent tonality. Uh, Ellie's vocals are great. The nuances again in her vocals are brought out. Um, the overall balancing between the bass, the highs, and the mids were very, very nice. Nothing. It has great bass. It has lots of bass. It has nice mids, and it has lots of high end as well. But nothing overwashes anything else out. And it was a lovely, lovely replay. The bass is honestly so close to dynamic driver bass and the way it resonates and decays. It's uh, shocking how well implemented the bass is on this set. How did the turbo do? Well, again, uh, you're getting a sense of, I'm repeating it because that's exactly how it sounds. It has a warmer vocal sound, uh, lower sub bass hits, but again, missing the mid bass punch. Uh, the sub BA sound like, um, honestly, they sound like a bad dynamic driver. That's exactly how they sound in this track uh, in comparison to the T6. There's no bass texture. It's just... Buh, buh, buh. Uh, and the relaxed highs make it a nice cool chill listen so again the turbo did this one not bad as well SA6 Mark II least bass out of the three because now I've turned that bass switch off um, between the two the pen on and the SA6 Mark II with the 0100 setting of the turbo which is not the most bass boosted and the SA6 Mark II with the bass switch on, the bass of the turbo and the and the Dunu sound the same. Uh, but I turned, at this point, the bass switch off on the Dunu to try to bring out something exciting, uh, more balanced or something, um, and I turned it off. So it has the least now bass out of the three, the darkest still, the warmest still, the least resolving. Um, and again, I will say, on the Dunu's behalf, this is a really nice chill set. It it takes it it presents musicality over technicalities. That is its shtick, right? Gypsy Kings solo por ti, ami wanna. Uh, T six uh, love this presentation. This is a very musical, uh, clean detail, very perfect amount of musicality and resolution. 
and I love the vocals. It's really engaging when you listen to stuff like this. The I really enjoyed the mids and the layering and depth of playback. Um, Sonia and mids, babies. Um, and the Noel's treble for the win, honestly. Um, it is magic sauce. It's the magic recipe. That's the word I didn't find earlier. Uh, the turbo, what a difference in presentation uh, between the two. A less resolving uh, bottom and top end with a more relaxed mids. More musical? Yes, I think so. Uh, maybe, but certainly not as exciting and or accurate representation. A more laid back, chill experience. Uh, SA6, a warmer yet smoother, relaxed and musical playback, trading technicalities for analogness. So, and as I was going on and on and on with track after track, um, you were getting, I was getting an extremely good sense of the three personalities of these two, I or these three IAMs. We Cry Together, Kendrick Lamar. I just found this track. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> with him and his, uh, him and his woman uh, loving each other. Uh, T6, big bass thumps super clean vocals and the not wa and the and the vocals are not washed out even though this set can pump out some phenomenal bass uh but the bass is absolutely stand out and still punchy and textured by far the best bass out of these three ims by far uh different level uh sounds balanced resolving and most accurate the SA6, um, with the bass switch down, um, the it still thumps, actually. Not as fast or as detailed or textured as with the switch on, that's for sure. Uh, but with the switch off, it has better tonality-wise. Uh, Less dark. Bass is, uh, bass is better. It's, it's got a better sound to it. Um, it does sound now more mid-centric. A piano washed out uh, didn't, it's kind of interesting. The piano is washed out in this track with this I am with the Dunu. Um, and I didn't even notice it, tell you the truth. Uh, it sounds, the whole presentation sounds very melodramatic, right? Um, when they're yelling at each other in this track with the vocals, there was no... There was no raise in the tonality of the voice. There was none of those details that makes this track so fun. And the and the SA6 kind of just smoothed over it all. And it was like listening to it, but uh, you, it, it there wasn't enough there to to bring out the excitement for me. So how did the turbo do? Uh, well, it was definitely better than vocal wise than the SA6. Uh, better dynamics again. Uh, bass is the probably the most organic, actually, sounding out of the three. Old school kind of style. Uh, good timber, good tonality. Uh, and the pianded, piano sounded actually the best out of all these three. So, Bittersweet Symphony by the London Grammar. Grammar? Uh, that I... The London Grammar. Uh... T6, very airy, very airy, uh, resolving by far. Bass goes lowest, textured, great dynamics, sub bass, and speed together combined. Uh, rare trait. Mm -hmm. um, it has the most uh, balanced playback between the bass, the mids, and the treble of all three. So I would consider that with the, in the standard setting, um, it's a very balanced and neutral mm -hmm. sounding I am. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, the Turbo, fun vocals again, lusher, warmer than the T6, uh, more dynamic than the SA6, the Dunu for sure. Same uh, sub bass as the SA6 and sounds a bit more mids forward because, well, there is a lot more mids and upper mids in their tuning. The uh, Dunu, smooth, organic, chill again, nice sub bass. Mm -hmm. Again, mid centric is the greatest word you can use that uh, definitely um, for its playback in that. So, now, where are we? Are we got any more? Uh, thoughts versus. 
Okay. Let's just wrap up the thoughts versus the three IMs here. Uh, let's start with the SA6 Mark II. Okay. This is the most laid back playback. I, um, I preferred again with the bass switch off. Uh, as the mids and treble were more present in the mix. The most relaxing chill set, the most forgiving of poor recordings uh, because of its relaxed top end and less resolving nature. Now, the turbo, the, to the tonality is very good, but it's slightly boosted upper mids. I do make them sound more mid forward at times. Uh, bass uh, versus the SA6 are similar, uh, but falls very short to the T6 on quality and quantity of bass. So uh, T6. So Meyer Audio's T6. Mm -hmm. SL T6. The most balanced playback. Uh, bass, mids, highs, balance, and the most neutral mids. Bass uh, not only has the depth of the others, but better texture and speedier like mid-bass. Um, the T6 bass has a dynamic driver, honestly, tonality and texture. It combines that, uh, but it's the special sauce of this IM is it takes the bass, the B, it's, it's BA bass, but it sounds like a dynamic driver, but it incorporates enough of the BA speed in there to make it super exciting for um, lovers like me who like also faster, speedier bass more hits it sounds like it has more bass more attack um the it is by far the most resolving uh air details um but it also sounds the least colored so most accurate playback for tonality and timber so that's exactly what i meant by that previous statement is it's less colored um, everything sounds natural and to i think what the recording follows the recording a lot more than the other two sets um it is the most transparent um and i think it does really follow the recording as intended with the least colorization i think that's a very important note uh to the two and so i also did an overall score and i broke it down from resolution timber tone stage air separation warmth uh how chill it was uh, bass, mid-bass, highs, musicality, dynamics, fun factor, and my value score. And just to talk about some of those things, which is kind of in how I got to that, uh, let's start off with the most controversial one, which is value. And I wrote $100. Uh, and on a scale of, say, 1 to 100, I wrote 100 as their top. And um, I wrote the... Uh, Turbo as a 50 value and the Dunu as a 50. And why is that? Well, well, I, I rated the Turbo lower score for value-wise because it's, you know, $100 more. Um, and it's not as versatile and it's not as clean and it's not as accurate and it, the bass isn't as good and it doesn't come with a modular cable. Uh, uh, I think you can get it, but... Um, it just fell short of everything. Um, same as the Dunu. It is very niche. And I guess it would be better... It's not good value. Um, it isn't. Um, I, I'm not even a fan of that that Hulk mini cable. I think it's it's stiff and not a great cable. I'm sorry, Dunu. Um, and like I said, I think you can get the same sound signature same overall with a $40 IM from RT and the R2. Um, so pretty, pretty poor value and being the most expensive of $579. Um, the most resolving T6, uh, Turbo 70, uh, Dunu 50, Timber, um, 90 for the T6, not perfect. Turbo 90 as well, and uh, Dunu 60. The tonality, um, how well does it do, you know, male vocals? How, how well does it do female? How accurate is that? Uh, T6 
90, Turbo 90, uh, Dunu 75, Stage uh, 85 on the T6. And again, it's not the world's best stage. The stage is wonderful on this set, and it's actually kind of my favorite kind of staging, um, where it does put instruments in their own place in the sound stage. Um, and in a 3D space, but it's not crazy spastic. If you've ever listened to um, an I Am that is so... It puts so many different pieces of information while you're trying to listen to something. And I found that with the Letshure EJ07s. Um, and it was, it was hyper realistic trying to put stuff in in a 3d space and people some people love that for me i don't because i it pulls me out of the zone when i'm trying to just listen to music and it sounds artificial it just sounds like it's trying to do something it doesn't need to do um where this one kind of incorporates you into a big big huge massive stage but it doesn't try to pull you your attention away um, and I really like that about the stage of uh, this T6 so thought I would explain that a little bit more uh, the turbo isn't far off at 80 and the Dunu is at 70 I mean it, it I, I was being nice uh, air um, the, the the treble air and nuances up there are a hundred the uh, turbo falls short at 70 and the dunu falls big time on its face at 50 uh, and again that's the tuning so this is just a comparison to the three right uh separation uh where stereo separation and, and instrument placements uh that kind of stuff uh 85 so again not top of the scale when it comes to the best of the best out there okay back on the list uh now so uh chill factor um which is kind of funny you think uh i would mark the dunu sa6 mark ii as the highest in the chill factor and i did i uh because it's a it's an easy listening i am it's not going to offend anybody uh, unless you're looking for more of something in the playback. Uh, where the turbo, I gave about an 80% chill factor. And again, top scores to the T6. Because even though it has a great amount of technicalities and uh, air and separation and details, it's it's very well balanced uh, and well behaved. And uh, it's, a, it's an awesome listen just to chill, sit back and listen. Um, and not pull you out of the zone. You've just got all the information, and right there in your brain does a wonderful job of uh, dissecting it and uh, putting a big smile on your face. Bass, come on, T6, 100. Uh, turbo, 60. Uh, Mark II, 60, uh, in comparison. Uh, and mid-bass, right? 100%, again, on the T6, the turbo, half of that quality. Half of that with the Dunu as well. It was that much of a difference between the three sets. Uh, highs, again, I'll give it to the T6, 100%. Fantastic highs. Uh, sparkly, detailed, separation, tonality, crispness, hi-hats, cymbal strikes. They're all bang on and in the right quantity. Uh, turbo has more upper frequencies than uh, the Dunu, so not surprisingly, um, but comparison to the T6, I only gave it about an 80%, uh, whereas the Mark's, uh, the Dunu is 50. Musicality, 100% on the Dunu. It's where it excelled over the three sets. It's by far the most musical set, not necessarily the most correct tonality wise uh, where the turbo and the t6 also evenly scored at 85 uh, dynamics again certainly goes to the t6 100 percent turbo is about 85 percent of that and 50 percent for the dunu um fun factor last one 100 percent for the uh, t6 absolutely 100 percent turbo 
85. It's still at base is the least quality of the base set of the three. Um, where the SA6, I also think in the fun factor, you could get 100% out of it as well. Even though I don't think it's great value, I thought for fun factor, just for a, a listen, it was um, it was worthy, right? Now, lastly, um, I think that has given you a good snapshot of this uh, Meyer Audio SLT6. But just to wrap it up, I mean, the bottom end is fantastic. Again, DD-like um, and... Well, hold on. Before I get to that conclusion, let's talk about this versus my favorite, absolute favorite, guilty pleasure set, the Zen's Mangard Ups. So also a hybrid. In this case, it's a tribrid. So it's using a dynamic driver for bass. It's using uh, BAs for mids, and it has ESTs as well. Now, I really love this EST implementation. And uh, where I think no... BA trouble can replicate it. It can't be done yet. Uh, they can produce the crispness of the top end in BAs, but there's something in special sauce of ESTs that I think uh, is very, very hard to replicate. And the Up is one of those sets that really does a phenomenal job. I've heard a couple people say that they couldn't hear the ESTs in there. It's like, I... I would argue that is not correct um, for me anyway. Versus the up. Okay, so stage. The, S, the Meyer Audio SLT6 is, in a nutshell, stop getting ahead of yourself, monk. Jesus, just stick to the script, okay? Uh, stage is way bigger on the T6, Re more resolving. The up also has, by the way, a pretty fantastic stage, uh, but the T6 trumps it. It uh, The up is definitely more organic sounding, uh, especially in the dynamic driver bass. It's one of my absolute favorite kinds of organic, thumpy, speedy bass. It is amazing on the up. And even amazing on the t6 with these open architecture sonyan ba never thought i'd say that um timber and tonality though also go to the up it just sounds more organic more natural more musical um both are super fantastic for fitment wise. I got to say that. That's the other thing, too. When you can listen to a set for hours and hours and hours because it's super comfortable, that also plays a big part, right? Now, it's also subjective to your ear anatomy, but I find both of those shells very, very comfortable. Um, the tweeter and the treble is actually really stand out on both. I think it's so well done, both tuning wise and here's a graph of how those two compare and i was a bit shocked on how close this is um and they both do staging similarly where the t6 does kind of trump it out with a bit of more openness and more spaciousness but they're both not those crazy 3d um it's a it's a funner easier listening I am for stage. It puts stuff in the right spot, but it doesn't try to freak you out. Um, so that was really how I heard the two. And just to summarize that, the T6 for me is a more resolving up. It trades off some of the perfectness of the timber and tonality of the ups organicness for more technicalities and i honestly love them both equally for what they do and what they bring to the table um i'd have a hard time choosing honestly now between both sets 
between the up and the T6. Um, pretty insane. It did that well. I mean, going back to the beginning of this video where I had the best IM I've ever heard, the 64 Audio Velour, in my ears and putting these ones back in and it wasn't the, uh, it was, yeah, these are damn good, right? And same as the reaction with the up versus the this Meyer Audio T6. It was like, both of these are freaking amazing, amazing IMs. The big difference between all of those sets, though, is this is 450 bucks. Okay? So, for me, it killed the Dunu SA6. It doesn't do anything special for me. It's just kind of, right? Uh, the Turbo was so, you know, what was it? 14 different possible combinations of tuning. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, tune shit properly and send it out. Uh, the, at least the, the two switches are totally doable. Um, and once it, it does help you dial it into your preference. Between those four tuning switches on the T6, you could go from way more analytical um, with less bass um, and or you could go to more musical and it really had that enough subtle difference to make a big big difference in your hearing and your impressions of the set so that was how i heard this meyer audio slt6 if you didn't he hear me express my enthusiasm, then I didn't do my job. Um, I love this set. I think they did a phenomenal job on tuning this set. This is a killer. This is a banger on the industry, and um, and it for its price point, absolutely stand out. Um, for its price, it's absolutely stand out. And I hope more people get their ears on and share their impressions, um, and enjoy this set as much as i certainly do so it's now getting on to the connects audioholics to share their impressions with you so if you don't believe the monk maybe listen to somebody else that you do trust um but you should trust me on the set really is that good um thank you thank you to meyer audio for making this awesome <laughs>